Howdy everybody in YouTube land. What we have in front of us today is an item that was shipped in for repair. So this one is packed in a very not so friendly way. Um, there's hardly any padding in here whatsoever. It's just kind of like laying in here. That's it. Not much to it. But it appears that we have a CD-ROM drive. Now, I can't recall if I did a video on one of these or not. I think I did. These things are notorious for capacitors, and that is likely why it was shipped in. So let's get this thing out of its little cornucopia so we can take a closer look at it. So I got the drive out, and it appears to be an Apple CD Caddy drive. It is a CD150. So it's a single speed drive, I'm pretty sure. Um, maybe a 2X, I don't remember, but I think it's a single speed drive. But the unfortunate thing is, because of how badly it was packed, it was not packed well at all. Look what we got going on over here. That's unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. So. I'm going to contact him and see what he wants me to do because I can't I can't do anything with this. These are junk. That's that's screwed. That's an unfortunate situation. So, this video will either get uploaded after I fix it or you won't ever see it because of this issue right here. Because I think I don't know if this is an eBay purchase or what, but this is um not good. All right, I got more clarification. So this wasn't an eBay purchase or anything like that. So the owner, the original owner is filing a shipping claim um, to see if he can get any kind of reimbursement. We'll see what's going on with that side of the front. But I did get the okay of tearing it apart so we can try to fix it and see if we can't deal with this mess here. Um, but for now, we're going to go ahead and power this thing up figure out what we got going on um see do we get power yeah we got power there's a caddy in there already all right so caddy is out now i need a cd to put in there now these things are notorious for caps and who knows if it could have been damaged in shipping so hold on i gotta i gotta have both hands for this because these uh, these caddies are never designed to be used by handicapped people that only have one hand. So, all right, let me grab a CDR here. Now, I know these drives will read CDRs. I've done it before. So, it's not ideal, no, but I know they will. All right, let's see what we get. It's not even attempting. It kind of senses a disc, but then it gives up. All right. That's what I thought. All right. Um, yeah, I'm not all that surprised. I don't know if that's from the damage or from the caps or who knows. I'm dealing with a lot of um, randomness here. There's too many variabilities. So, but that's not a big deal. Um, let me grab a pressed CD and try that. But I'm not expecting any behavioral differences. Wow, this is dusty. So that's been in there for a while. All right, um, let me go grab a CDR, or not a CDR, a regular pressed CD and see what happens. All right, I have me a pressed CD. How about a little bit of cursed for a good time? A little millenn Windows Millennium action. Because why the hell not? Let's see what it does. Oh, pick that one up. It's struggling. Bad. Alright, so we've got optics issues. Now, it could be caused by bad caps. It could have been caused by shipping damage. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, okay. Alright, so we need to crack this guy apart. And we need to see what's going on inside. So, why don't we do that? Because we've got to deal with this mess anyways back here. Which, <sighs> alright. 
stop complaining. Okay, so let's pull this guy apart and see what we got going on inside. And we're going to do some work, hopefully. All right, so here's what we got going on inside. Pretty common, pretty typical, pretty bog standard, nothing special. Yeah, all the impact damage back here we're going to have to take a look at. Um, but power supply sits in between the two, so perhaps this drive wasn't affected as badly. We can only hope, anyways. So... Okay, so presumably I'm going to start tearing this thing all the way apart. Ugh, this is kind of kicked out. I'm going to tear this thing all the way apart so we can get down to the circuit boards of the drive because that's pretty important right now. Also, I want to use my external power supply instead of this thing because this thing could have potentially bad capacitors in it, which my other drive that I rebuilt just like this one did. So... That's a thing that needs to be taken care of. Also, I got to take it all out anyways, because I got to do something about that. That is totally screwed. And the good thing about this plate is it's screwed on. So I can take this plate off individually, take it between blocks of wood and then straighten it out and then try to straighten these Centronics connectors out because they're screwed. So yeah. All right. Not a big deal. Let's get the drive out first. Let's get this thing all torn apart. All right, so this particular drive is actually a Sony model CDU541, and the optics in these drives are actually fairly good. They're they're like I've seen them in professional CD players because they use a linear tracking system versus gear driven. Um, but 1993, it puts it in uh, that era. So I have an itching suspicion I know what's going on in here, or at least partially. So. Okay, I'm going to need a very tiny screwdriver to get this trap door off. And then I'm going to need more tiny screwdrivers to get the rest of these off. But that's not a big deal because I have most of them in here. Sort of. So I have that one. And then I have that one. Okay. Now, hopefully, it's my charge cable. So, yes, we good. We ball. All right, we get that out of there. So I'm curious what's under this trap door. Um, because my drive did not have this trap door. It's a KSS laser guy. Come on. Thank you. KSS 183. Okay. So apparently the laser diodes can go bad in these sometimes too, but that's not a big deal because this thing is actually serviceable. Kinda. Because there's the diode there. You can get replacement diodes. Uh, and there's a collimating lens, so the diode doesn't have to be precisely installed. Where your trickiness gets into is the pickup, which is over here on that side. So if I had to change this diode, I probably could but I'd rather not because it does not seem like it would be fun uh no so okay this looks, looks like the main circuit board is on the top I don't see any caps in there right now but I know they're hiding in there so let me uh get the rest of this guy apart especially this this hides the connections to take off from the bottom so let me get that part starting from here the cd300 is definitely a newer slightly better design than this one um now i've got the 150 i think that sits the low the low profile one that sits underneath like the compact mac and it actually is a good unit all right so okay yeah this is a what oh god oh god Oh no, that's bad. 
Well, I can pretty much tell you what this problem's gonna be. Oof. Omega oof. Okay, well, I gotta get this circuit board out. Here's the connectors that goes to the pickup. Those are the servos. Oh, man. Does this come out? I think it does. Yeah, it does. That's a clippity doo da. Oh, God, this is so bad. Tilt this guy up. Mmm, tasty. Okay, all right. Let me get this guy out. Oh, yeah, this thing is bad. So, this spot here on the back side is where this big cluster of capacitors is located at Tank Farm. And then we've got some up here in this section that need attention. No corrosion on the back side. And then I'm looking in the servo sections and I don't see anything that's of concern. So, but that, that's a problem. You can see it's wet. Yeah, that's got to be cleaned. I got to wash this thing. Yeah, this thing has to be washed. That has to be ground down and cleaned up. Because we can't have that. That's really bad. So. Yep. This is definitely a problem. Okay. Well, before I can even continue, I got to get these caps off and I got to get this board cleaned. Alright. I got the capacitors off. So... All of this stuff is just kind of nasty. Ugh. So, you know what that means? Time to go bake dry this guy and I'll be back in a minute. Time for the bake dry. Alright, now we're freshly dried. So we have all this old capacitor debris we got to deal with there and there. And all that crap up here. Luckily it's not terrible, but... Yeah, it's not not great, but it could be a lot worse. 
So that one is coming through the top there. Okay, so yeah, we just got to clean up this old debris and scratch off the corrosion so it doesn't get any worse and then start throwing some caps on it and see what happens. Hopefully it works. But we shall find out. All right, now the new capacitors are installed in place here and here. So, and then I cleaned all that up and tinned it up. Now, I'm going to probably put solder mask here or some kind of mask there once I know it works. But for now, I'm going to leave it like that and we're going to hook it back up to the drive mechanics itself and see what happens. Let's hope it works. All right, so we're back together partially here. Um, power supply, let's turn it on. We got a light. Okay, here goes nothing. Let's put a, a CD in here and see what happens. Picked it right up. Not a problem. I can hear it running. I want to see if I can get this board up. So you can see it spinning. I don't want to damage anything, but you kind of see it in there running. I can hear it anyways. If you if I can hear it, I'm sure you can. All right, eject. Alrighty then, so let's take that out and set it aside for now. Grab my uh, CDR, which is over here on the spindle. See if it'll pick up a CDR. If it'll pick up and work with a CDR, it's going to work just fine. trying I think it did I think it worked you can hear the servo noise where it hits a, uh, a part of the disc that's hard to read oh hell look at that I bet you that scratched right through the data layer Yeah, it's kind of crap, but hey, you know what, though? It's reading it. It literally picks up the CDR. Instant. Wow, I think we're good. The CD-ROM drive is working. It is working. So we can finally move on. Um, we're going to go do the power supply next. We'll check its caps out and get those replaced. It. Replaced. It. Yeah, replaced. It. Replaced. It. Actually, before I get too far carried away, I want to dump that ROM. Because I don't know if it's been archived, but I want to make sure that I have it. Because I don't want to be the person that, you know doesn't do that and then next thing you know this ROM goes bad or bit rots and then nobody's got a copy so we're going to dump that guy I got the ROM dumped and the next thing I wanted to do was seal that up so we don't have any problems there alright so the next thing we got to do is take a look at this power supply and inspect its caps but also we got to get this off anyway so we can figure out what to do with that so let's crack this guy apart. Let's see, what do I need to do that we have? Let's see. We have this screw here. So we have that one. And then back side, we got this on the top. Wow. After 30 years, this tape is still. Wow. They. Definitely don't make it like they used to. 
<laughs> Try that with today's Chinese tape. No, not happening. Okay. And then on the bottom side we have you. You. And we have you. Then you. Then you. Okay. Now, that should, in theory, let everything loose, and it does. Oh, now we can investigate the damage to see how bad that is. So, I can set you off to the side now. Go bye bye. And now we can take a look at you. Oh god, that's bad. It's not broke, but it ain't good. Oof. Okay. That's not gonna come out either. Nope. I'm gonna have to unsolder that. Mmm, mm-mm. Same thing there. Well, I probably don't need to mess with that, but in order to flatten it, I gotta get you out. So, anyways. Meantime, let's get you apart. Let's see, this looks vaguely familiar. Try to pull the, there we go. Set you out of the way there. Okay, do we have any leaky poos in here? I don't know, but we're about to find out. Because we know how this goes. These have these little doily washers on there. Except for up there, it does not have it there. Okay, it looks like it comes up. Whoa, shit. You gotta come out. How do I get you out? Well, I'll tell you how. It's funny, you need this big power supply to do what that little one does now today. The one I, I just had plugged in a little minute ago with the other drive. This is, does the same thing, but it's so much bigger. All right, all those wires are out of the retaining clip. So this should just pop out of here like so. There we go, yeah, this looks familiar. Okay. What do we have going on here? 2200 at 10. We have a pair of those. No signs of leaking. We got a thousand or thousand at 16. No, can't tell. We have another 100 UF at 10, which I have those. That one is leaking. Just ever so slightly. Okay, so they're going to go, all four of those are going to go, um, this one will likely stay, but these four are definitely going to go, um, the switching controller, it looks like it's a single IC switching controller, yeah, it makes sense, okay, well, let's kick the desoldering iron on, I'll kick the power supply on, get all that warmed up, actually, I'm going to take a break for dinner. So I'll shut you off in a minute, but yeah. Good old Darude moment. Anyways, um, so caps are installed, so we're going to go ahead and put this back together and then deal with the fun part for last fun. Uh, anyway, so I pulled the original caps off and surprisingly, I'm not seeing any signs of leaks. 
But it's from 1993 and it's 30 years old, so it's going to go bye bye. But yeah, the one I thought was leaking, which is this one, doesn't show any signs of it. So, out of for all of you that are curious, this is a SXE series, just like this one here is also an SXE series. This one is a um SMG series. I know the SME leaks for sure. So that's an SMG, and then this one is another SMG. So these appear to be fine, but, you know, they're, it's getting new ones. So putting it back together, then we're going to deal with that mess of the Centronics connectors. So here's what I've done so far. I took the cables out, and that still has to be uh, bent backwards somehow. Um, but for now, this is the right kind of plastic that bonds with that uh, PlastiWeld stuff, so... I went ahead and bent these back. These ears are back in place as best as I possibly can. And I got the um, the MEK solution in there and I've got them clamped. So they're kind of squishing them into place and it's letting them cure. So that way, and I did the other ones too because they were cracking. So they're all, uh, you know, being bonded back in place so we can have the proper um adhesion that way so it doesn't keep flying apart because the problem was it was trying to fly apart even when i stretch stretch it out because this plastic is the only thing stopping the centronics connector from flying back in when you plug a cable in so that is being glued in place hopefully it holds and then we will set that off to the side so it'll cure and then we'll start working on this thing somehow all right after lots of hammering and bending and tapping and clamping and gluing later we're finally in a situation where i think i am satisfied with it it's not perfect but it's all glued back into place it's holding together it's not snapping apart it's fine so i think i might have gotten lucky here so now i can start putting this drive back together and then we can test it all right we should be all ready for testing here so Turn the power on to the drive. Turn the power on to the machine. All right. It's trying to start up. But while it's doing that, um, Go ahead and get the Apple Legacy CD-ROM, because that's what I have on hand. So we got Welcome to Macintosh, we're firing up. Looks like it's System 7.5. Alright, so we're going to put you in there, and that's a clean disc. I freshly burned who knows how long ago. Put you in there. And then put you in here. It's detected. Now my question is, do I have the Apple CD-ROM driver in here at all? That part I do not know. Oh, 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 oh. I just saw a drive activity. Do we have a CD? It's trying. Not the fastest CD ROM because it's only 150. But it could still have an issue. It looks like it still has an issue because it's going hell now. It's trying though. So this thing actually loaded. It's just very slow. Like if I go into the disk utilities, it'll 
it'll eventually load. See, there it is. It's working. It's just very slow. It's like right on the threshold. It almost, it almost needs the tracking servo adjusted just a hair. Just a hair. Uh, other than that, it seems to be working. And that's a CDR. That's not a CD. These things were never designed to read a CDR, but I know that they do. So that is actually a CDR. Now I can put an actual pressed disc in there and see how well it responds. But before I do, let's see. I guess it's not going to load. Uh, maybe not. Will disc copy run? Yeah, it's... It's just taking a while to generate the table of contents. Let's see, this is a... Um, There it is, disk copy. Let's run it, Let's see if it'll run. It's just very slow. Um, what I could do is put an audio CD in there and listen to the CD and see how well it tracks throughout the disk. Because if there's a lot of static and skipping and pops, it's a laser, sir, a laser power issue but if it's just going, if it if it's if it's got staticky sounds to it, it's usually the laser. If it's skipping like tick 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 and keeping on, it's usually the tracking servo. It's usually that's how you can tell. So or the focus servo, but it's you know you, it's hard to tell the difference between the two without a scope. But in the case of going by ear, that's how you tell. So the CD ROM is working. Do I have Apple CD audio play? I do. I do have it in here, so it will play a CD. It's not going to because there's no CD in here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and spit that out. It's working. So I'm gonna go grab a uh, pressed disc and see if it takes as long. All right, so I got me a, uh, get that out of there. Definitely, I'm kind of glad that these caddy CD things have died off because that's just annoying all right so i got my pressed cd here let's see how well that one works here we go Oh yeah, that's much faster. All right, so pressed discs work great. Okay, so mm -hmm. all right, so everything is working great. What in the world? Mount everything. Oh, you know what? This is a um free or shareware thing Mac Pearl what is a Mac Pearl I don't even know oh this is a programming oh I didn't know that Pearl that's been forever Apple 2C wait a minute is this a Mac is this an Apple 2 emulator uh huh Wow. This is an Apple II emulator. That's kind of neat. Oh, this thing is slow. It's kind of like... Hold on, reset. Yeah, that's kind of neat. Anyway, so... Uh, we'll kill that. So the actual CD drive is working excellent as far as the pressed CD is concerned, which these drives were originally designed for anyway. This thing was designed for a pressed CD scenario. God, that's so much easier just to just do it that way. God, that's terrible. Alright, let's go ahead and put Mr. Um, CDR in there. Hmm, U.S. Atlas. 
Interesting. So put you back in there again, just to give it another try. Yeah, that's what it is. It just does not like CDRs, but it is working. Seems like the longer it's on, the better it is. But, uh, yeah, so that's what it is. It's struggling this with CDR, so it needs a slight power tweak on the laser, I think. But that's fine. Um, we can do that off video. The point is, we got the CD-ROM drive working, and that's kind of what I wanted to do with that. So that song should give away when I burnt this disc. So that disc, it reads it no problem, right? I mean, look at this one. If it reads that, I mean, there's a hole in it. If it reads that, it'll read anything. So that's that CDR that's full of holes. And it's reading it right now. And a modern drive will not read this. I tried to recover it, but it just won't do it. However, this one, holy shit, it's actually reading the MP3 files off the disc. Lost the file names, but yeah, whatever. Wah, wah, wah. No such luck for that one. I mean, look how yellow that disc got. And there we go. It's all back together now. So, all the screws are in place. I got this fixed as best as I could. The CD-ROM drive is working properly. Some CDRs, it's a little bit iffy. Other CDRs work fine, and all pressed discs work fine, as intended. So I think this this is a good spot to wrap this video up. So if you have a comment, please feel free to leave one. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And until next time, guys, thank you for watching.